the only thing I was interested in is quality and quality coffee. I love coffee. I'm just, just, I dream about it every single night. And I kind of added up all the coffee that I drank, and I thought, if I can find 50 people who drink as much coffee as me, I can cover my house payment. So I just literally roasted coffee in my basement, and it took a few months before one person bought one pound of coffee. It was a little bit trial by error, and then it was really an elimination of choices. I didn't have a lot of money. I think wholesale coffee at that point in time, the green market was uh, maybe 80 or 90 cents. Selling price wholesale was 375 and I knew my house payment was $850. If you might think about coffee, you think about the trends on wine, bread, chocolate, beer, scotch, they're all kind of the same, right? There's still a glut of that commercial stuff in the middle, the Wonder Bread, if you will. But all these uh, bakeries popped up kind of like we did for centuries before, same with local breweries. I think we were lucky in the coffee industry because fine wine had really blazed that trail before us. And a lot of what we do, even to the descriptives of our coffee, have taken from the fine wine industry. Yeah, I was find the best coffee that I could find in the world, roast it the best way known to man, and get it to the customer as fast as humanly possible. So I discovered these air roasters. It's kind of the concept of hot air popcorn pop, where the beans are really handled gently, and they rub together really smoothly. It doesn't break them. And every single bean is roasted perfectly from one side to the other. The cup of air roasted coffee is very smooth, mellow, creamy, non-bitter. The taste was dramatic. So that took me to Corvallis, Oregon, and this crabby old guy who built these roasters in this old church in Corvallis, Oregon. So I bought one of those and sent it to Kansas City. And so my 17000 now was down to about $4,000. I didn't have time to measure the door, so of course the roaster wouldn't fit in the basement. So I had to spend a couple more weeks to find somebody that would be able to cut that in half and get it down in the basement. When I put the roaster in the basement, it took the electricity that could have gone to the air conditioning. The first sale, vividly remember, it was to Pam, and she had the Carton KU Med Center at St. Luke's. I think she probably just admired my passion, perhaps. And so finally, you know, after seeing her several times, she gave me an order for 10 pounds. I went straight to Brookside, went down my basement, roasted the coffee, drove straight back to her, and she said, what's that? I said, what's your order? Where'd you get it? And I said, you know, defensive, self-righteous. What do you mean where I got it? I roasted it. Where? I said, in my basement. And she touched, she goes, it's still warm. The smell is incredible. So then a couple of bells went off. After that, I walked right in the front door wherever I was delivering, and it was like it was like a cartoon with Wile E. Coyote. You could just see the aroma going behind me. So that first month of December 1993, I had sold $1,100. I think I had nine accounts. The next month, it was probably 30 some hundred dollars That first full year then, we did 540000 and then it was a little over a million, and then just under $2 million and so on. 